using error bars and standard deviation as well as trend lines and um, R squared values today. In order to do that, we're going to create um, a table here. We're going to use a chart. Our table's already been created, but I'm going to highlight one, hit Command, and highlight the other side of this. This gives me two different columns. I'm only going to graph process data, as that generally is what we want to display. We're going to use a scatter plot from the chart section, not the line graph, the scatter plot. Why? Because we want to be able to see our trend lines. In order to see the trend lines, we actually need to see the scatter plot um, to add the trend line. Now, you'll notice that the x-axis is actually wrong. Um, we want the x-axis to display the temperatures and it just simply displays numbers. In order to fix that, we're going to click on our data series. We're going to come over to chart on the side, series, and we're going to click on series. From there, you'll see x data, y data, and label. We're going to move the x data, it says E2 to E6. Um, we know this is A, B, C, D, E, E2 to E6. We actually want this to be our Y data, which is not going to let me move it. So we actually want A2 to A6. So I'm going to write table 1, space, space, semicolon, A2, colon, a6. This is going to make my make, you see it's highlighted over there, it's going to make my x data the temperature. It's going to make, then we're going to do the same thing with the y data, but this time we're going to use e2 to e6. Click x. It should shift it. You should be able to see x and you should be able to see x and y on your mean. If we come down here, we should see it fixed as well. Okay, now we're going to make sure our chart is set up appropriately. First off, I only have one set of data here, so I'm actually going to delete the legend as it's not necessary. The chart title is already here, so I'm just going to fix it so that it's appropriate. So I'm going to call this the amount of oxygen produced at different temperatures and this is an average so we're going to call it the average amount different temperatures okay now if you want to add it's important that you also your all your axes have labels so if we come over here and we say axis I can have my Y so I can say show title on the x-axis, I can say show title, and this actually gives me the ability to now type in what these things are. Remember that when, when you have anything, you make sure you put your units on the values here. I'm going to call this one produced in milliliters. Okay, now I have two titles. So we're going to make the chart a little bigger so we can actually see what's going on here. Um, okay, now what we want to do is add, we want to add error bars. Error bars are generally used during standard deviation so that we can pick on that. To do that, we're going to click on the series number the letters. We're going to come back over here to series. And we're going to click advanced. If the advanced button is already not clicked on, simply click it open and hit error bars on the side there. This is where it's important that you actually have a more advanced version of numbers, usually 08 or higher. If you have an 07 or 06 version of numbers, you probably will not be able to basically do this aspect, which is an important part of the IB curriculum. We want y-axis bars because we want it to go up and down, not left and right. Although it is possible to add x-axis bars if you want. We want a positive and negative axis bar. And we, want, we don't want a fixed value, we want a custom value. That custom value is going to come from standard deviation. So delete the number that's in there. And then come up here and we're going to highlight 
the numbers of standard deviation from the table that we calculated earlier. We're going to do the same thing for the negative values. If we come back down here, you should have seen that your error bars had shrink, shrunk. We can also see that the error bars here are actually quite large in comparison to the numbers, and there's lots of overlap. This means that my data is not very well done, and in many cases is actually completely useless. For our purposes, though, it works <laughs> for what we're just trying to show you what we're doing. Error bars, you can add a trend line right next to the error bars. Make sure that you're clicked on the actual data. We're going to add a linear trend line. Once you add that trend line, you can say show equation and say show square r squared value. These two things are important. The equation gives us the slope of the line, shows us, a, as we can see, a negative correlation. The r squared value gives us a, ver a variable to measure how well the trend line fits the data that we've been given. In our case, 0.83 is relatively high. The closer it is to 1, the better the fit. Um, 0.8 is really the lowest you ever want a trend line, although 0.9 and higher is really what you're seeking after to make it, to make it the best fit possible. So in our case, our data kind of fits the trend line. There is a negative trend. However, it's not the best done. We can see that our data points are actually way too varied and have way too high a standard deviation to make any difference and therefore this data set is not very good. You can take this data, this graph now, and you can insert it then into a Word or a Pages document simply by copying and pasting it. But it's easy to read and easy to see. Hopefully this helps and that you are able to use it. Thank you. Bye.